welcome to the 2019 Fall University Address. I want to recognize each and every one of you for being here today and for all that you do on behalf of the University at Albany and our students. It is always an honor for me to be able to address all of you and thank you for all that you do to make the University at Albany an excellent institution of higher education. There are many challenges that impact institutions of higher education throughout the country, and we are not immune to these challenges, whether it be the demographic changes that are taking place, the economic issues that we confront, technological innovations that are transforming our world, as well as living and learning in a global society where geographical boundaries are increasingly blurred. In the midst of all this, the educational paradigm is also suffering significant and fundamental structural changes. Or as Bob Dylan says, the times, they are a-changing. Many of these changes present important opportunities for institutions of higher education. However, we must be willing to adapt to these changes. We must also be willing to rethink and modify our roles and practices in an ever increasingly complex society that at times questions the value and impact of a higher education degree. Despite the fact that we are still celebrating U Albany's 175th anniversary, we are really still a fairly young institution in so many different ways. Think about it, only 19 years ago, in 2000, we became a Research One institution. In 2014, we experienced a significant loss of a college. In 2015, we added two new colleges. Only 20 years ago did we enter the Division I in terms of athletics. Also, during the past 50 years, the demographic composition of our students has seen a dramatic transformation. Indeed, given our relative youth, the tectonic plates have shifted and will continue to shift underneath U Albany. These shifts will be for the betterment of our institution. However, how do we work collectively and collaboratively to move this great institution to a whole new level of excellence into the new and emerging paradigm of higher education? This is the challenge that we must all embrace. As you will see, we are making significant progress, but there is so much more work to be done. Nevertheless, I am confident that we will move and are moving in the right direction thanks to each and every one of you. This is truly an ideal time to take stock of where we are as an institution, to think deeply about what we want to carry forward from the past and where we may need to shift gears or even make transformational changes. This reflection and planning is essential if we are going to be successful in the future. We also need to come together as a community by celebrating our culture and our traditions, both new and long-standing. Many such traditions and celebrations have already taken place this year. During our 2019 convocation, we welcomed our incoming students and strongly conveyed to them our expectation that with our support, they will succeed and graduate in four years. This was followed by the President's Welcome Picnic, which is always a great way to kick off the year. Soon after, we held our second annual fall university welcome for faculty and staff at Casey Stadium. The turnout and the celebration was truly excellent. 
The following week, our fall speaker series, thanks to the Student Association and the New York State Writers Institute, brought the legendary Dan Rather to the SEFQ arena. Of course, we just celebrated homecoming, a great weekend to reconnect and to celebrate, including a great Dane win over Rhode Island. So what an amazing weekend. And today, the fall university address is in another one of those important life cycle events that brings us together as a community and creates an opportunity to share information and build connections with one another. On your seat today was a copy of the university's 2018-2019 annual report. As we move towards our core priorities and goals embedded in our strategic plan, this means that we are advancing our success. Thanks again to the very hard work carried out by each and every member of our university community, and we must not take this for granted. As the report shows, this has been a banner year for the university at Albany in so many different ways. As part of our 175th celebration, we also launched an exciting new brand expression, Unleash Greatness. This new visual and messages amplify our commitment to supporting all members of our community to be the authors of their success as well as the success of the University at Albany. This past year, we significantly increased our externally funded research, particularly from grants from the National Institutes of Health. Nearly 30 U Albany faculty members contributed to an impressive increase in NIH funding in several disciplines, resulting in $22.9 million from 39 new NIH grants and almost 55% increase over last year. One of those researchers who is among us is Dr. Julia Jennings of our Department of Anthropology. She won a prestigious Mentor Research Scientist Career Development Award from the NIH National Institute on Aging to support her research on the role of kinship ties in the well-being of older adults. Dr. Jennings and all those who have received funding from a multitude of sources really deserve a big round of applause. We also made great progress this year on major capital projects. ETEC, our 246,000 square foot complex on the Harriman campus will be the epicenter of our academic, research, and business collaboration on climate, security, emergency preparedness, emerging technologies, and the environment. This facility will promote and encourage interdisciplinary research and research collaborations. This project is also a climate conscious construction, part of SUNY's goals to achieve net zero carbon emissions and includes a geothermal field of 190 wells, one of the largest of all SUNY institutions. Solar panels and efficiency measures will reduce energy costs by 70%. We are certainly being good stewards of our environment. Renovations are well underway at the former Albany High School. We are currently in phase three, and once phase four is complete, the south wing will be set for occupancy by the College of Engineering and Applied Sciences. The former Business Administration building has been beautifully renovated, and it's now Catskill, the home of our School of Education. Please take a tour. In addition, we completed a $30.7 million renovation project to renovate Beverwick and Schuyler Halls in Dutch Quad. 
We are also very excited that the Student Health Center is moving back to campus and will be located on Dutch. I took a tour in August and it's going to be spectacular and provide very much needed services for our students here on campus. As part of our initiatives to create a safety net for student success, we opened our Purple Thread Closing Store for students to shop for free, gently use professional clothes for interviews and internships. Also, we launched the Purple Pantry to help ensure that no student has to miss a meal due to the lack of financial security. And over the summer, thanks to a grant from the Herkshire Foundation, we hosted Project Achieve consisting of a group of first-generation high school students from New York City for three weeks to help them prepare for the transition to college. Also, we had the best year ever in the university's history for fundraising with $31 million raised. And part of the reason we reached this new record was really the record-setting participation of our faculty and our staff in our annual fund. My deepest gratitude goes to all of you who, in addition to your very hard work day in and day out, are also great donors and generous donors to the University at Albany. And this brings me to a very special announcement. Our colleague, Alan Lazat, is here today with his wife, Lisa Jackson. As many of you know, Dr. Lazat is a distinguished professor and former dean in the School of Criminal Justice. He and Lisa have decided to create an endowed professorship in criminal justice as well as a scholarship fund for graduate students in the school. Alan and Lisa, for this amazing gift, a truly transformational gift in the amount of $2.5 million, please stand and be recognized. So very much for your generosity and for your dedication and contributions throughout the years to the School of Criminal Justice and to the future of the University at Albany. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. With Alan and Lisa's gift and other pledges, we have now reached $138 million in our capital campaign. So thanks to everyone who has made a contribution to this capital campaign. Throughout this year, we also celebrated the achievements of our faculty and our staff with numerous award ceremonies, both large and small. For example, the Chancellor's Awards for Excellence and the President's Excellence Awards. The President's Awards for Exemplary Public Engagement for your publicly engaged research, scholarship, programming, and service. Several junior faculty members were also recognized for earning early career awards and other prestigious honors from NSF, the National Science Foundation, NASA, NIH, and the Institute for Education Sciences. Two of our colleagues were selected to the National Academy of Public Administration. Carl Rothmeyer and Teresa Pardo, congratulations. Very, very well deserved. 
a new global database of the top 100,000 most cited scientists developed by a group of researchers at Stanford University has placed more than 60 U Albany faculty from seven schools and colleges on the database. Impressive. Based on this analysis, Dr. Aigu Dai came out as number two in the field of meteorology and atmospheric sciences. Quite an achievement. Making news across the country and in the United States Congress, Dr. Siwei Liu is among those working with Facebook and other tech companies to battle deep fake videos, demonstrating just how easy it is to forge convincing counterfeits using a commercially available computer, the internet, and software. How about students? One of our 2019 graduates, economics major Maxine Papenkov, won the International Economic Atlantic Society's, Society's Best Undergraduate Paper. Maxine is pictured up here to your right, and the runners up next to him are from Yale, USC, and UPenn. Now, what an amazing education we can provide at the University at Albany. And our graduate students are also making significant contributions across so many fields, like Amanda Akanian, a doctoral candidate in social welfare, seen here with the textbook she just co-authored with Dr. Heather Larkin, The Marvels of Twitter. Our Division of Advancement also pulled down numerous awards from their industry for their work in fundraising, marketing, and communications, including two case Circle of Excellence Awards recognizing international excellence in advancement. Also, just recently, over 90 colleagues were recognized and honored at our employee recognition luncheon for service of 25 or more years. Collectively, the 94 employees represent 2,982 years of service. Thank you for your commitment to the University at Albany. Also, our Great Danes, as I mentioned previously, just celebrated a 20th anniversary in Division I during which time they have won 115 D1 championships, including eight last season, in addition to being recognized for their academic achievements. And not too long ago, the UAlbany dance team unleashed their greatness at the National Dance Association Awards, winning third place. And speaking of success, Two weeks ago, our U Albany's Leadership Initiative held its first ever conference titled Authoring Women's Success. This event attracted more than 200 of our faculty and our staff and was an amazing launch for this critical initiative to create stronger connections and better pathways to success for women at U Albany. Indeed, the steering and planning committees did an excellent job, and we will hear much more about this initiative in the months and years to come. Last month, we held our second annual Albany Book Festival, which was even bigger and better than last year, with more than 5,000 people in attendance. A huge thanks to you, Albany's New York State Writers Institute, for all the very hard work that went into creating this tremendous success. And last week, I stood with many of you downstairs in the Great Hall to announce new agreements with Hudson Valley Community College that creates truly seamless transfer pathways between Hudson Valley Community College and U Albany. The transfer admission guarantees a big step forward as it will cultivate a connection with U Albany right from the start of their Hudson Valley Community College education. 
And we also celebrated two major and signed two new agreements with BOCES. First, to create an extreme weather risk assessment dashboard with the Center of Excellence in Weather and Climate Analytics. Through the dashboard, partnering school districts statewide will be provided with localized weather data and forecasting predictions updated in real time. This is an outstanding example of a Research One University translating our research expertise into the benefit for the broader community. In addition, we signed an agreement between Capital Region BOCES and our School of Education's Academy for Advancement of Teaching Assistance to create opportunities for underrepresented minority TAs in the Capital Region to earn college credit and eventually move into the teaching positions. We're also working on so many fronts when it comes to external partnerships such as the New York State Capital Region Higher Education Council, which had its inaugural meeting here at UAlbany about one year ago. This new consortium of 24 institutions of higher education across the Capital Region will raise the visibility of our region as an excellent destination for higher education. On the international front, we increase research and academic collaborations, finalizing six transfer agreements, 17 MOUs, and seven dual degree agreements. We now need to work extremely hard to ensure that these partnerships translate into enrollments at the university at Albany, especially at the graduate level. And we also continue to build partnerships with our elected officials at all levels. For example, we were honored that Senator Schumer was here this month to discuss his legislation to fund a cyber education pilot program. Given our significant strengths and accomplishments in this area, you Albany must be a key player in this process. Colleagues, it is abundantly clear that this has been a year marked by many significant achievements. And I just have highlighted the tip of the iceberg, or else we would be here all week. And I hope that some of you were surprised by some of the achievements that we have made, or maybe not surprised, but become knowledgeable of the great progress that we are making as an institution of higher education. However, not everything is peaches and cream, sort of to say. We are also facing some challenges that test our resolve and our commitment as an institution of higher education. And perhaps all of you can come up with some of those challenges and issues. However, in order to continue the momentum I have been describing, we will need to work together to reverse some concerning declines in both enrollment and retention. These are not just you Albany issues. Colleges and universities across the United States are facing similar challenges. Indeed, we are at a critical juncture where we see an increasing number of institutions of higher education across the country that are either closing or merging as a result of the challenges that we all confront. However, the way that we need to address, successfully address these challenges will need to be tailored to our particular strengths as well as our unique needs and to what we value as an institution of higher education. There are indeed some important dynamics in the national education landscape. First, as a demographer, I am well aware that population projections are not in, fa in our favor in terms of the number of college-age, college-bound students. This is particularly true in the Northeast. College-going students, traditional college-going students, will be fewer in number and they will be proportionately more diverse. 
This will require that we not only take a comprehensive look at our recruitment practices, but the resources and services that we provide to our students, as well as how we teach in the classroom or online. As stated by the American Council on Education, and I quote, the fastest growing population in higher education is adult learners, now comprising nearly half of the total learner population in the country, who have vastly different needs than those of the traditional student. The Chronicle of Higher Education indicates, and I quote, that more than 30 million Americans have some college credit but no degree, a market half again as large as the more than 20 million Americans currently enrolled. Think about that. But yet, few institutions have made or are positioned to make the investments that may be necessary to serve these working students. We need to change our educational paradigms. Second, as you know, public resources for higher education continue on the decline nationwide. We are increasingly relying on tuition, research funding, philanthropy, and public-private partnerships to meet the needs of our students and of our institution. Consequently, we also need to revisit our financial models to reflect this new reality. Third, the very contentious national landscape around immigration and new federal immigration regulations have had a detrimental, a negative impact on climate for recruiting international students. This is a growing challenge to higher education, and we must need again to change, to adapt to this paradigm. To address all these issues, all roads lead to developing recruitment and retention strategies that will get our enrollments where they need to be at the university at Albany. This is critical for our institutional stability, both academically and financially. And this needs to be the top priority of every single person in this room. It is no secret that it's an institution we did not meet our targets this year or for either undergraduate or graduate enrollments. And our overall enrollment this fall is slower than last fall. This impact has been exacerbated by a decline in undergraduate first year retention rate. As a result, we have experienced and continue to experience a non-trivial financial impact as some of you may know, last Monday, Vice President Foreman provided a detailed report to the campus in, our, in an open budget forum. If you did not make it to the forum, you can see this presentation on my UAlbany. Our goal, the goal of my presidency, has been to be transparent and to keep the University at Albany community informed. But as Todd indicates we cannot merely cut our way out of this situation. We have to grow and we have to invest. This is where our strategic plan investments come in. All told, we have invested close to $5 million in, in a range of initiatives across our five core priorities. Actually, just last week, you received a message from Provost Kim and Vice President Christakis announcing a new round of accelerator funding, all which is focused on recruitment and retention. Further, we will soon be issuing this year's call for proposals for STAR funding, strategic allocation of resources, which will also be targeted strictly to enrollment. And on this front, Rockefeller College just hosted its public service weekend to encourage undergraduate students from underrepresented groups to pursue graduate study and careers in public service. 
of 78 applications from across the nation, including New Albany, 29 amazing students were selected to participate. And I mentioned this program as it was a recipient of a STAR grant tied to our goals around increasing diversity and inclusion at the graduate level. And I think this is truly a great model for the kind of proposals we will be looking for this year. So take a look at this proposal and think about next star funding series. In addition, I had the great, a great experience participating in the University Art Museum's currently also star funded exhibit on sports and selfhood. This grant enabled the museum to bring artists to campus to speak about their work. Indeed, the STAR program is having a positive and significant impact. In the listening and learning tours, I have gone into a lot of detail, if you've been participating in those, about the kind of strategic actions we will be implementing as part of our strategic enrollment management plan. This plan is going to be released in the next few weeks, so I will not steal the team's thunder. But I will tell you that it will also focus on a variety of issues, including marketing and website development. The latter, as you know, has received tremendous attention, and I am pleased to report that we have made significant progress. About 2,098 web pages have already been built. Three school websites have been launched, the School of Education, the College of Emergency Preparedness, Homeland Security, and Cybersecurity, and the School of Public Health. All others are drafted and under final review with deans at the school and college level. Also, critical to our strategic enrollment management will be the development of innovative new academic programs. Good examples include the Masters in Science in Data Science, as well as the Masters in Science in Digital Forensics and Cybersecurity. The latter is an interdisciplinary program between the School of Business and CEHC. We need more interdisciplinary collaborations. And we are developing a number of our other activities with strong academic components. Take, for example, eSports. We gave our student association-sponsored eSports club a shot in the arm with a modest investment, and they are going gangbusters. It is benefiting not just the students in the club, but others who are dedicated followers. This has been a partnership between academic affairs and student affairs with active and strong leadership from faculty and staff at CEHC. This team has already competed with great success. This is an excellent example of leveraging an opportunity to engage students that will result in greater recruitment and retention for you, Albany. Along these lines, we really need to th be thinking very strategically about the ways in which today's students think and learn, and technology is really at the center of it all. We must ask ourselves, how have we changed our pedagogical approaches, how we teach our students, how we engage our students and the services that we provide them throughout the institution, given their diversity, their new learning environments, the dramatic changes in technology, the transformations of our economy, and the ever-changing global landscape. In the realm of technology, as highlighted by the Chronicle of Higher Education, some faculty members simply decide to ban social technology from the classroom, while others are looking at ways to harness mobile technology in the classroom. How are we going to be the university that not only meets today's students where they are, but learn to anticipate who tomorrow's students will be and what will they need in order to succeed? By the way, I thought this would be a great time to show off 
our registrar's new chatbot, whose name is, of course, Minerva. Hi, I'm Minerva. I'm a virtual assistant and can help answer your questions. How can I help you? Uh, <laughs> for those of you in the back, the question is, when is this speech going to be over? Uh-oh, you stumped me. Pretty cool chatbot, right? From the registrar's office, adapting to the new changes that we all confront. But don't worry, I'll be concluding here fairly soon. I've covered a lot of information here today about what we have achieved, whom we have honored, some challenges that we are facing, but we have also highlighted some of our strengths and success stories. As I said at the beginning of this address, today, as we round the corner of our 175th year, it is time to dig deep, to come together as one institution to identify what truly makes us great. One of the things we often say about ourselves is that we are a comprehensive public research university. However, while being comprehensive, we cannot afford to be undistinguishable. My challenge to you today is to help us identify the things that make you Albany unique. What can we harness that will set us apart now and in the future? How do we build on our strengths? For example, one of our focal points here at UAlbany is cybersecurity. We have tremendous faculty strengths here, not only in CEHC, but also in business, public health, engineering, public policy, and criminal justice, among others. Can this be the rising tide that lifts many academic and research boats? We also have incredible expertise and a global reputation in atmospheric science, which also relates to emergency preparedness, social sciences, education, social welfare, public health, and the humanities, among others. We also have two schools that broadly fall in the area of health sciences, social welfare, and public health. Is this an area that we need to build on, expand, and strengthen, particularly given our demographic transformations across the country and across the globe? Is it the research of our national leading RNA institute that differentiates us? What about the role of the digital humanities or artificial intelligence at UAlbany as we continue to move forward? What defines us as an institution, I may ask? Again, what defines us as an institution, I may ask? Is it public service and community engagement? Is it a Research One University recognized nationwide for the intersection of diversity, inclusion, and excellence? I don't necessarily have the answers to these questions. I do have opinions, if you would like to hear them. But that is where you come in. We can certainly have a powerful combination of programs that are both distinctive and nationally, if not globally, recognized, and we do. I would argue that it would be difficult to name a discipline that would not have a role to play in the kinds of collaborations that these areas would catalyze. Let me just give you an example and add weight to my argument that UAlbany is already a leader in some of these fields. Next month, we are hosting the RISE 2019 conference. Listen to this. About 90 institutions of higher education, 
some of the major funding agencies and close to 400 participants from throughout the United States and Puerto Rico from a wide variety of disciplines from A to Z will des descend on our campus. The three-day conference will explore how higher education can strengthen preparedness, response, and recovery in the face of growing threats posed by a changing climate and extreme weather. This conference puts you Albany at the national landscape on this critical issue and puts a spotlight on some of our national leading academic and research areas, our scholars, our researchers, our teachers including emergency preparedness, atmospheric science, public health, business engineering, among others. I would dare to say that there is not a discipline at this institution that cannot play a critical role in this process. Finally, I submit to you that our internationally acclaimed New York State Writers Institute has extraordinary potential to bring new opportunities and assets to the table locally, nationally, and globally. Again, every single college, every single school and department at this institution can play a critical role in this process. Colleagues, this is certainly our time to learn to lean into our core institutional strengths, strengths that will differentiate us that will increase our visibility, grow our reputation, and round out our profile as a top-tier public research university that is both comprehensive and distinct with the ultimate goal of ensuring the success of our students. I ask you that you have these conversations in your academic and administrative units with department chairs, the provosts, the vice presidents, with the university senate and other governance bodies. And speaking of governance bodies, last week I met with the student senate. Mike Christakis and I met with the student senate. And I have to tell you, I was deeply impressed with the engagement of our student leaders and the questions they raised with both Mike and me. I tell you this because I think that you all would have been extremely impressed and proud of our student leaders as I was, and because it was a true reminder of how important it is that we all work together collectively, collaboratively, and for the greater good of this institution. A couple of months ago, Rosie, my wife, and I just began our third year at the University at Albany. Despite the challenges before us, I am truly more confident than ever that UAlbany's future is bright and promising. Yes, there are and there will be many challenges before us that we collectively will need to address but we have the right people in this room to address those challenges. We have the right people in this room to remedy those issues. We have the right people in this room to address those questions. Remember, UAlbany is an institution on the rise, which has been transformed through its 175-year history. And we will continue with these transformations, thanks again to our excellent faculty, our staff, and our students, as well as your service and your strong commitment to this great institution. Many of you know that I like to instill a sense of urgency. That yes, we must have discussions. Yes, we must deliberate but we must also take action, and we need to be proactive. We must turn our goals into action in a timely manner. As the great Nelson Mandela once said, 
We must use time wisely and forever realize that the time is always ripe to do right. Colleagues, this is our time. Our time to do what is right for our students, the time to do what is right for our university, the time that is right for our community, and the time to do what is right for our world. I look forward to working with each and every one of you to unleash together, focusing on our great and promising future. Once again, thank you all so very much for being here this afternoon. Muchisimas gracias, and I would be more than happy to answer any questions. Thank you. recruitment and, uh, and retention strategies, one of the ones that seem most promising to me is direct admits to programs and meta-majors. Can you speak about that a little bit and what you think we should be doing going in that direction? Thank you, Jim. So one of the strategies that we've put forward is having students being directly admit uh, to their majors, their majors of preference. We do understand, right, that an 18, 19, 20-year-old might not have a great definition of where or what he or she wants to get a degree on, but we know that students have interests. And so one of the goals, one of our goals is to directly admit students to their major of preference. Just think about how we compare with other university centers. If you're interested in pursuing criminal justice or engineering or any of the other majors uh, that we have, in the other institutions, students are admitted directly into their majors. So imagine when a student is comparing that institution or those institutions with U Albany, in which we tell them, well, we'll admit you to the University at Albany, and then maybe two years down the road, you might be admitted direct, you may be admitted to your major. What institution do you think the student is going to choose? The institution that is directly admitting these students into their major. Yes, we know that students will change majors. We know that. It happens all the time. But at least if we create a home, let's say in this case, students get admitted to the home of uh, the School of Business. They don't know whether they want to pursue uh, marketing or any of the other degrees offered by the School of Business, but we create a ma meta major. The first two years, the School of Business will house these students. They will provide the mentorship, the support that these students need. Other students in that major, in that school, will provide the camar camar camaraderie and the support that these students need, and students will feel that they have a home. This increases retention rates, and this increases graduate graduation rates, right? And so this is one of our approaches. Again, the meta major is, well, I want to go, um, I want to pursue a degree. Uh, I'm not sure the type of degree, but I know it's somewhere within the College of Arts and Sciences, right? And you, and I'm not sure if it's arts and humanities, or is it the basic sciences, or is it the social sciences? So we create three meta majors around those areas. And students decide, well, I'm going to go into arts and humanities. And there, they'll take a variety of courses. Again, that uh, group of faculty and departments will adopt these students and mentor these students and work with these students. A couple of years later, the student decides that he or she wants to pursue art or music or whatever the case might be. That's the function of a meta major, to provide a home for the students from day one so they are not lost in our campus and they feel a sense of belonging. And so we're beginning that immediately, right, Mike Christakis? It's already rolling in, right? And rolling out. And we do have, by the way, we do have a number of academic programs uh, that already do uh, uh, early admits. We actually started several pilot studies this fall. And what we found was that the, um, what do you call these rates? The um, conversion rates? Yield. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Ed. See? Conversion yield, you know. That the yield rates were higher in those students that were admitted directly into their majors. So we know this has a positive impact. So rather than shooting ourselves in the foot, we need to look at new ways in which we work with our students to get them directly admitted to their programs of preference here at the University at Albany. Hi, I'm Greta from 
UUP. And um, I noticed on the one slide about our budget that it says 10 per, only 10% of our money comes from uh, the state. And um, every year, UUP goes down to the legislature and lobbies and, and, and makes the case for how we want to provide a quality, affordable education for our students. And we share that goal with you, that we want the best for our students. And I would like to invite you to come with us to lobby the legislature together. Because I know years ago, there might have been one time that happened together way before you were president, but I think if we can join forces, we're going to strengthen numbers. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Greta. And, um, you know, we, and, and by the way, this, the, this percent may vary somewhat depending on what pie uh, we're looking at, but roughly 10 to 12 percent, right, Todd? Um, and we're constantly uh, at the Capitol working with legislators, with elected officials, their staff, all the time all the time, right? Uh, we have our Office uh, for Government and Community Relations, our Vice President, Sheila Siri, her team, some of the deans, some of the Vice Presidents, myself, we're there all the time uh, lobbying, well, I'm not sure if lobbying is the correct word, but working uh, with our elected officials to try to increase uh, the funding for our institution. So that is critical uh, that we do. And we support each and every effort uh, that everyone does in order to continue to try uh, to engage our elected officials and others to continue to contribute uh, to the institution, to the university at Albany. So thank you so much for the invitation. Any other questions, comments, feedback? Not seeing any, let me just again remind you of if you will, my challenge to you. No matter what office you occupy, no matter in what seat you sit, no matter in what unit, organization, department, division you represent, recruitment and retention, it's everybody's business. As the Chronicle of Higher Education indicates, the goal of recruitment and retention goes from the janitor to the president and everybody in between. You are an important person in the recruitment and retention of our students here at the university. So I challenge you to have and ask within your departments and units these types of questions, to come up with recommendations, to come up with answers, to come up with solutions and initiatives. We welcome them, we value them, and we thank you for them. So once again, muy buenas tardes. Thank you for being here. Muchísimas gracias.